our question today is, what causes the phases of the moon? Well, if I had to guess, and I don't know for sure, but I think it's how the Earth uh, casts a shadow on the moon. So if the moon is on one side of the Earth, the sun is on the other side. And so when we see a crescent uh, moon, the Earth is blocking out, you know, part of that, blocking out that dark area, and the sun is only shining on that sunny spot. The phases of the moon depend on uh, how the moon is traveling. Well, no, I don't think it is. Let me think for a minute. It's the way the moon is traveling around the Earth, but also where the sun is in relation to the moon. I would say it has to do with the Earth getting between the sun and the moon. The phases of the moon. Um, I think the phases of the moon is the sun reflecting off the moon, but the phases of the moon changes based on where the Earth doesn't block it, where the moon is in relation to the sun and how the sunlight shines off of the moon, depending on where the moon is rotating around the Earth. That's my guess. What I'd say is if the moon is here and the sun is over here, as the sun shines this way, we only see the sun shining on just part of the moon, and that's what we would see. And so the crescent part, this dark part, you know, and everything below is how the Earth is, its shadow is on the, on the moon. <laughs> so for the moon to be full, the sun has to be on the other, directly across from it on the Earth. And so if the sun's closer, the closer the sun is to the moon, the smaller the piece of the moon you're going to see, I think. So you're the sun, you're shining this way, and so if the moon is here, it is the Earth is now blocking part of it as it moves here. I can see all of the moon because you're shining directly on it. As I come across, we move through our phases, waxing and waning till we become full again. The Earth obviously is rotating. That doesn't matter, does it? No. The moon is rotating around the Earth. And so depending on where we are on the Earth looking at the moon and how the light reflects off the moon determines how we see the moon. What would a full moon look like versus maybe a crescent moon? Uh, like where the position of this? Okay, so a full moon would be over here because there's no Earth between you and this, between the sun and the moon. And so a crescent moon would be somewhere in here where part of the Earth is creating a partial shadow on our Mikasa moon. I would have to assume that when we see a full moon, the sun is fully shining onto it and the Earth isn't blocking. In other words, the sun being up here, you know, and the moon being here, that it, we'd be able to see it as a full moon. To see a full moon, the sun has to be exactly opposite. And as they and so it is as they both as we're revolving around the sun and the moon is revolving around us, all three together. This, where the sun is depends on how much of the moon's lit up because the only reason we see the moon is because the sun's lighting it. Full moon for us. To, the moon would have to be directly above us, but the sun has to be able to shine directly at it. So where would the sun be? So if I'm here, I guess the sun would be directly where the camera is. Right over here. Over there. Okay. Because then we'd see the light off the moon. Okay. And what about the other phases? So I think just, uh, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't uh, help me, uh, my explanation, I, I still can't figure out why it's a full moon for a certain amount of time and then it wanes <laughs> and then waxes again. <laughs> So uh, I just think that it must have something to do with the the position of of the sun and the moon at, at different times of the year. Would the moon be totally in the Earth's shadow? How many times a year do you think that would happen? Uh, roughly once a month, I think. Once a month. When, when there's no moon, that's a new moon because it's completely obscured by shadow. Okay. Um, how does lunar eclipses work then? Well, that's when the lunar has been eclipsed. What does that mean? 
I think a lunar eclipse is when Venus moves between the moon. And, no, because Venus is on the outside. I don't know. It's, it's yes. No. I don't know. I'm not prepared. Around 28 days for the moon to go around the Earth one time. Okay. And final question. How does... How do you th what do you think a lunar eclipse is? How does that work? Um, a lunar eclipse is when the Earth moves in between the sun and the moon. So the Earth casts its shadow on the moon and blocks the sun from lighting the moon up. New moon is where you can't really see the surface of the moon at all. Where would How would the new moon work in this? Oh, the sun would then have to be behind the moon, so behind us. Right. So we would be, the Earth would have rotated this way, the sun is behind us, and the moon is here. So then we see no light off the moon. Now we're ready to tackle the question of how do the phases of the moon actually occur. Here are a series of illustrations. This is not to scale. It shows the moon as it goes around the Earth. It takes 28 days for the moon to go around the Earth. And this is a top-down view. The side of the moon that is facing the sun is always illuminated by the sun. The side of the moon that is not facing the sun is not illuminated. The position of the moon compared to the earth and the sun determines the phases of the moon. When you're a person on earth and you're looking at the moon when it's in this part of the moon's revolution, the phase is going to look different from when the moon is in this part of its revolution. And it's going to look different from this part of its revolution. Now let's take a look at an important side view. The Earth's orbit and the Moon's orbit are slightly tilted so that the Moon, the Earth, and the Sun are not at the same plane. This is why there is not a lunar eclipse and not a solar eclipse every 28 days when the Moon orbits around the Earth. That's why the shadow of the Earth only goes on to the Moon every once in a great while. And the same thing, the shadow of the moon going on the Earth only happens in a great while, not every 28 days. How can we model this so that students understand how this actually works? Well, let's take a look. I have a camera on a tripod, and the tripod is on a Frisbee disc. And attached to the camera is a coat hanger wire attached to a ping pong ball moon. So that the camera acts as a person on the Earth looking at the moon, which is the ping pong ball. And so the camera and the ping pong ball rotate on the frisbee. So it represents the 28 days that the moon takes to revolve once around the Earth. All right, if we zoom out, we can see now on the right we have our sun. The sun is represented by a light bulb and a lamp. We start off with the full moon phase, and the camera is going to start rotating. And again, there's one side of the moon is always going to be facing the sun. It's going to be lit up, but it's just the orientation of the, the moon relative to that of the Earth where you see the moon phase changes. And so now we're getting to the crescent moon, and now we're going to be approaching the new moon. The new moon is where you can't see the moon. All right, why can't you see the new moon? Well, if you take a look at the top of the picture, you can see the light from the sun. And that light from the sun is lighting up the side of the moon that's facing the sun. The other side of the moon, which is facing you on the Earth, is not lit up at all. And so it's very difficult, it's impossible to see it, because if you think about it, during the daytime, you see the sun, and that's pretty darn bright. So if the part of the moon is up in the sky that's facing you is not lit up, you're not going to be able to see it at all. As the moon continues to revolve around the Earth, we can see that the crescent moon is forming, and we see that the right side of the moon is lit up. That's the part that's facing the sun, whereas the other side is not. It's facing away from the sun. Here it's waxing. More of the, sun, the moon is being exposed to light. And we're going to finally, you know, 14 days later after the new moon, we're getting back to our full moon. And again, since the Earth and the Moon's orbit is tilted, we're not going to see a lunar eclipse here at all. We're going to see a full Moon because that side of the Moon that's facing us, the Earth, is totally lit up by the Sun. The Sun is behind us, and we see the full Moon exposed. 
Now, why did I interview people for this video? Well, it's important for people to acknowledge their misconceptions that they have on about a certain scientific phenomena, like the phases on the moon. And the big misconception that you saw with some of these people is that the phases of the moon is caused by the Earth's shadow projecting onto the moon. And with these demos, it shows that it's not at all. But if people are going to learn the concept as it is and break those misconceptions, they have to confront those misconceptions with something that shows that their misconception is clearly wrong. If they're just demonstrated how this actually works, they're not going to learn it. It's not going to take. They have to confront their misconceptions to break those misconceptions so that those concepts sink in.